Hey guys, welcome back. We're in the knife room today. We're going to stabilize some wood. I've got this really pretty wood. It's from a burl of some type. I don't know. It almost looks like some kind of a, a maple or something. This is that wood I was telling you about that my neighbor gave me. I don't really need these small pieces, but I need to make a set of scales for uh, a fillet knife that I'm going to make. So, uh, this stuff won't hold up. You can see, um, like this spot right here, uh, where it's almost like a fungus in there. And it's the same way on this side. And then you can see these little cracks running through here. They're not really cracks because it's a piece of burl wood. But they're, uh, it's fairly decent wood parts of it and other parts of it just crumble in your hands. We're going to take those piece of wood, pieces of wood and we're going to put them in the vacuum chamber with some cactus juice and stabilize them. So thanks for watching and let's get to it. this stuff is uh, we've got this activator here that uh, that we have to pour in uh, into the main body of cactus juice here the good thing about this stuff is it's reusable so we'll take this bottle of activator and you pour the whole bottle. You don't mix it in small batches. You pour the entire bottle into the main jug here. And then the instructions say to shake it up really well. says if there are any particles or floaties or anything left in it to uh, let it sit for a while and shake it again but I don't see anything because they say some of these activators might be powder or kind of putty like or something and this was liquid so it's uh, seems to have mixed in there really well so we're good with that now I bought this thing quite a while ago but I've never used it yet so um, I don't want to put the activator right in this vacuum pot because I don't want to screw it up so we're going to use a, a smaller bowl here. We'll just place these pieces in there as such. Then we'll pour some more cactus juice in. And see once this is done, let's see these things want to float. So I got me a little piece of steel from the shop to weight them down. You have to make sure that it's all immersed in the juice. I think that's plenty. And then we'll 
place this inside the pot. Put our lid on. And we're ready to turn on the vacuum pump. She's full of oil. Lids off. Here goes nothing. Now, I don't know, I don't think you guys can see down in there, so we're going to move this right over here and see if we can get a better view of what's going on down in the chamber there. Let me take a look at this. Yeah, we can kind of see in there what's happening. Here we try to get the best angle we can here. Okay, so now we turn on the pump. And look how it immediately starts drawing the air out of that wood. Now you can't let that overflow. Oop. Well, I guess we didn't want to do that, but... Uh, you can only create so much vacuum, it keeps foaming up. So you have to let the foam go away. And then we'll hit it again. This looks like it could take a while. And it's just a process of turning up the vacuum because it's sucking all that air out of the wood and replacing it with this cactus juice. So it's going to, uh, the, and the end result will be that the wood will be completely inundated with the uh, resin, the cactus juice resin, and, um, and completely stabilized. It'll be harder than... Uh, ironwood when it's done, you know, really hard wood, so. kind of splattered some of that in the pot because I was an idiot and I opened that valve when I shouldn't have. We've got about 23 pounds of vacuum in there right now which is very cool. There's a lot of air in that wood, right? And If you just left it on, the whole pot would just fill up with that foam from all that air, I think. So, uh, we just have to keep letting it, letting the bubbles go away. And then we'll hit it again. You have to just keep doing this until it doesn't bubble up or foam up anymore. Until it just quits, quits, uh, you know, until there's no foam left. So I've noticed now that it's not, it's not coming up anymore. We're holding a pretty steady vacuum. At about 24 pounds and I think we're going to be able to just leave it on now 
and let it do its thing. Now, if you're not sure about your wood, um, if you think it might have some moisture in the wood, uh, they recommend that you put your wood in the oven at you know, 150, 200 degrees for a while just to make sure it's good and dry. But I've had this wood for at least a year and it was bone dry when I got it. So I'm not worried. I wasn't worried about moisture. So we didn't put it in the oven. What the vacuum chamber is doing is it's drawing all that air out of that wood and sucking that cactus juice in to the wood, replacing that air. And then once this is done and the and the uh, and the bubbles stop, as I say, uh, then you let it sit in the, uh, you relieve, you, you turn off the pump and you let it sit in there for the same amount of time as it took to vacuum the bubbles all out. And then you take it out of there, you take the pieces out of there, wrap them up in some tin foil and throw them in the oven at 200 degrees for a couple of hours to, to make it set. This stuff sets by heat. So that's how we that's how we get it to really set up and harden up is by putting it in the oven. So um, we'll let this bubble away for a while and we'll be back when it quits bubbling. All right guys, so this has been in here for five and a half hours. And I don't know if you can see in there very well, but... Uh, it's quit really bubbling just the slightest tiny amount still um, but for the most part I'm sure that wood is inundated with resin just a few stray little bubbles here and there still coming up so we're gonna go ahead and open this resin pot we're gonna drain this air off very very slowly If we can. Okay, so we've got all the pressure out of there. Pull that off. That's covered in resiny crap. There they are. Uh, light's not very good in here, but you can see they're still soaked in resin. So, we've, uh, I went and got a couple, and a lot of guys I've seen on videos and that wrap these things in aluminum foil. got these little aluminum pans I picked up today and uh, I'm going to put a glove on here I don't imagine that stuff hurts you any but just to soon not get it all over my hands well, there's our weight scales. Like I was saying a lot of guys will wrap these in tin foil that I've seen videos of stabilizing. Um, 
Maybe that's because they don't have a pan like this. I don't know. But we just need to put these in there in this pan like so. Let me take this glove off. And uh, Um, now we can take this into the kitchen and uh, put it in the oven on with 200 degrees for about, I think it's like an hour or two, not positive, but see we can pour this, this is the beauty of this stuff. We can pour right back into the jug, whatever the wood didn't soak up is reusable because um, this stuff is not like epoxy resin. This requires uh, 200 degrees in the oven to cure, so as long as you don't heat it up, just pour it back in be reused. Very cool. Because that stuff is expensive. So here we are in the kitchen. Here's our pan with our scale blanks in it. We're going to put this in the oven now. 200 degrees. And I think the time varies. I'll probably leave them in there for a couple of hours just to make sure that they that they come out right so we'll be back in just a little bit uh, it'll be just a flash for you but I'll be back in a little bit and we'll pull them out and see what we got so now that we have those in the oven baking away I thought we would just take I've never worked with this cactus juice before. I've never stabilized any wood before. So this is the first for me. I bought this a couple of months ago. Um, not because I really needed it that badly then, but because I knew I was making good enough money to afford it at the time. And I knew I was going to want this bad boy this winter. So I think we can just take a little acetone. Remember we kind of splattered in this. Take a little bit of acetone and just wipe this thing out. We got a little on the sides of the pot here also, just for my fingers. Oh yeah, that, that stuff wipes right out because uh, like I told you, we don't, uh, it, it won't, it's not like regular epoxy resin. It won't set up without heat. So there we go. That's uh, just good as new again. Now we've got to wipe this bottom of this lid where it's splattered up on it. Clean it up.
All right, guys, it's been almost two hours, close enough for government work. Let's see what we got here. Well, they were pretty dark when we put them in there because they were wet. They're hard now. Pretty cool. So, still a little hot. Yeah, they're they're done. You see, you got a little little bit of resin on the bottoms of them there. Not terrible, but they're all going to get ground anyway. See, that's got a little shininess to it. But once once we take these to the grinder and clean them off, they'll just look like wood. Won't even know that stuff's in them, so pretty cool. Now they'll make some good solid knife scales. And I don't have to worry about this stuff here coming apart on them or anything. This white, punky, fungusy looking stuff there. So, pretty cool. Let's take them downstairs and Hit them with the belt grinder real quick. All right. Let's take these bad boys. Clean them up a little. of it it's uh, it's got some pretty nice features to it this one's not bad this one looks pretty good also but they're uh, this was some pretty it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a burl wood and uh, it's a fairly hard wood I think but it had some pretty soft spots in it too, and uh, by throwing it 
it in the uh, vacuum chamber with some cactus juice. You know that what happens is the vacuum sucks all the air out of the wood and it gets replaced with resin. So even though you can't see it, this stuff is loaded with resin. I mean it's, uh, it's completely soaked in. I left these in there under uh, 24 I guess it's atmospheres or whatever. It's like it's not 24 pounds. It's like uh, somebody that knows what I'm talking about maybe could put say something in the comments. Uh, it's like uh, bars of mercury, you know, like the uh, uh, the atmospheric pressure. Anyway, it was at a negative 24 and uh, for five and a half hours. It pretty much as high as the vacuum would go for five and a half hours in the pot. So then another two hours of cooking them in the in the oven to uh, you know to uh, get the resin to uh, cure because that cactus juice won't cure without heat. So there they are, pretty cool. First time I tried that. I think these are gonna make some great looking knife scales. And I'll tell you what we're doing with this project. We are going to take this perfectly good saw that I just bought at Harbor Freight the other day. And I've got a metal shear. We're going to take, and, uh, take a sharpie and we're going to draw out the shape of our tang and our fillet knife. Then we're going to use those shears because I'm afraid if I try to cut this with the cutoff wheel that it'll get the metal too hot and it'll ruin the temper in this. Because so you want a fillet knife to be able to flex. And we're not going to do a whole lot to this. This is going to be a purely stock removal project. Uh, so we'll just cut out the shape, the general shape of our fillet knife that we want. And, um, and then just do some fine detail work on the grinder, uh, you know, to get our shape the way we want it, uh, where with the grinder, we'll grind a little dip in the water, grind a little dip in the water. It'll be kind of tedious, but we don't, we don't want to burn this, because if you burn it, you ruin the temper in this metal. And see, this is already uh, heat-treated, tempered, high-carbon steel. I think we're going to etch this. We're going to do a little etching work on it and uh, see if we can't put together a pretty nice little fillet knife. Uh, when a friend of mine first asked me to make this fillet knife for her husband for their anniversary, I wasn't sure how I was going to do it because I don't think you can forge uh, a fillet knife, you know, to be that thin and flexible. Because you know a fillet knife really needs to have some flex to it, right? And so I racked my brain about it for a while, and that's what I came up with. So that's how we're going to do that. Just stock removal from that saw blade and see if it works or not. This, this first knife here may not cut it. I may have to, but I also bought, picked this up for like six bucks at Harbor Freight. Now this one, this uh, scraper, this is made of stainless steel. So... Um, not sure which way I want to go. This would be easier to take care of because it's stainless. It won't rust. You know, you can throw it in the sink, wet or whatever, and you've cleaned your fish and not have to worry about it. Where the one that I'll make out of the saw blade that, that's just high carbon steel, uh, it will rust. So it's going to have to be you know, oiled and taken care of. But uh, there was a time when all knife blades were pretty much made out of high carbon steel. They didn't have the thin you know, stainless and the technology and all like we have today. To, now most knives, I think, if you buy factory-made knives, most of them are, uh, or, a, or a big portion of them. Kitchen and utility, you know, utensil knives and as such are made of uh, stainless. So, uh, so that's it for that. Oh, there's something else I want to show you. Uh, check this out. Today, while I was waiting on my... Uh, waiting on my handle scales to uh, 
to uh, become stabilized and let them sit in that pot, I came down here, jumped on the anvil real quick with a piece of 3 8 round stock, and we banged out this hook here. I need to put another hole up here so I can put two screws in there, but first attempt ever at making a wall hook. I made it to throw my uh, welding bib on there. So that was kind of fun. I thought about filming it, but I thought, well, it's my first try. If I really jack it up, I don't want anybody to see. <laughs> so, now I just was thought, you know, I'll just make one real quick. And had the forge running to warm up the shop anyway. So, that was kind of a fun little deal to... Uh, to throw together real quick and and uh, you know anybody can make a hook the trick is to make the hooks all the same size if you make four or five of them you know for a coat rack so uh, not the best hook in the world I got more practicing to do but uh, we'll get it we'll get that uh, hook thing figured out I want to start making, uh, you know, a lot of different things. I'll make my bottle openers. I'll make some hooks. Maybe some poker, uh, fireplace poker, you know, sets with the little... Never made a little shovel either. That might be kind of interesting to try. So, uh, anyway, there's our handle scales, our video for today. Um, next video, we'll probably cut that knife out and get her shaped up, get those scales put on it. Not nearly as much work to do as with uh, with forging a knife, so shouldn't take long to uh, to bang that out. Might have to wait till the weekend unless I get a day off this week. So again, I sure appreciate y'all joining me and coming on this little ride with me. Uh, I'm having a blast doing this stuff. The shop is so much nicer to work in. It's wonderful. I'm happy. I appreciate all of you guys that have subscribed to me. Uh, means a lot. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button. We're always working on different things. I'm gonna buy a lathe in the spring and we're gonna start doing some wood turning too, making some bowls and bases and using incorporating a little epoxy resin and things into some of those too. So that'll be a lot of fun. So again, thanks for being here. Stay tuned for the next video of the fillet knife and we'll see you on the next one.